Dap Radar community calls. It is really cool to see so many faces out there in the Discord chat, and it's great to see so many people engaged with the future of. We're all here. Loud so, and clear. Hear you well. <laughs> so it looks like I spoke too early, right? Uh, I'm not sure if that was my problem or Discord. Either way, let's roll. Okay. So if that happens again, we are going to jump out into Twitter. Um, right. Where did we get to? Have you guys just been waiting for me to come back? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. Who have we got on the stage with us today? Let's go through this. So joining me today, we've got Nick Rennie, all-around product badass, as I call him, heads up our product development at DAP Radar, and alongside, and alongside his team is building the future of the world's DAP store. But he needs your help. Also, just a note, let's give Nick a little bit of freedom today. He's just come back from being pretty sick. So uh, he's almost back to 100%, but not quite 100, maybe like 99.5. With him, we have our fearless leaders. Skimantis Janowskis and the side of things and works closely with the team of UX designers to bring the best user experiences to that radar. Together, they got us to where we are today and they are massively excited to get us back to, to take us on to the next stage. Dragos, more than anyone here today, would love all and any feedback from users on how they interact with that radar, or how they see it playing out in the future, and just overall, like, you know, how, how you feel about the product. So, You've met the brave souls, you've got their names, they're the people on stage. Let's dive in. The format for today is that we'll go through and explain everything about the ongoing radar token proposals, future products coming to DAP Radar, the DAP Radar Pro features, and the upcoming bounties program. At the end of each smaller chunk of info, what we'll do is we'll open up the floor to questions so we can deal with the matter and then we can move on to the next stage efficiently. So first up, we're gonna talk about voting for the unclaimed ra radar airdrop usage so radar is our token it was released to the world in mid-december last year and it, it was on the ethereum network and now we're deciding what to do with the unclaimed radar based on community feedback so skimantis i will hand over to you now and hopefully everything works well let's go this is something i hope as well <laughs> all right so yeah uh, we planned to have this call two days ago back then uh, the voting was still on now it's actually finished, so uh, the vote has passed, the proposal has passed, and quite significantly. So I, I really want to celebrate this, guys. We had 480 votes. These are the numbers that the biggest DAOs are getting nowadays. So we did a really good job. We're just starting. I'm really proud of, uh, of everybody. And what does that mean now uh, when we have this uh, vote finished? So we have three main topics when it comes to where do we use those tokens later on. Uh, we talk about extending liquidity rewards on SushiSwap. We talk about multi-chain expansion and single token staking. Beginning with extending liquidity rewards. So we're extending those rewards for another three months until July. And that's done to, to maintain uh, and potentially increase the on-chain rate of liquidity. So this is very, very important because the more liquidity we have, the lower the slippage is. And that means more people can do bigger trades by losing less, less dollars, less money. And one important thing here, Ian? I oh, know that's just, uh, it's good. That sounds good. <laughs> cool, thought we, we maybe have some issues again. Um, right, <laughs> so one important here, uh, thing here uh, when talking about liquidity rewards is that some partners, and that's very important to our partners, some partners are already using Radar to pay for our services. So we're looking for a more convenient way to offer them uh, how to acquire Radar, but that's really important. That increases the buying pressure to Radar and increases its value going forward. And then we get to the second point, which is multi-chain expansion. And multi-chain expansion is something, you know, a, a core when you talk about DAP Radar, when we talk about Radar. Radar was always meant to be multi-chain. And we, we had a vote before in the forums and the most popular options voted by community and you know, also by us looking carefully and analyzing our metrics, those were BNB chain, also known as Binance Smart Chain and Polygon. So these are gonna be two chains that we will be, where we will be deploying Radar next. And uh, I can share that with you guys that from the technical perspective, uh, we already have a bridge uh, from Ethereum to Binance Smart Chain. And technically you can already get your tokens to Binance Smart Chain. We did it in partnership with multichain.org, also known as AnySwap. I think we have lost Scrimantas. Yeah, something weird is going on. Where did, <laughs> you, where did you lose me? When you're talking about multichain.org. 
<laughs> okay, so uh, I'll try to continue. Hopefully that's gonna work. Uh, so yeah, multichain.org, uh, we have the bridge deployed, so technically everybody can use it. And now we're looking into other partnerships, you know, with major DEXs and then seeing how can we incentivize liquidity there on BSC side, how can we uh, enable some pools and, and, and then we get to, obviously to the single token staking. And that is something that, uh, you know, everybody's excited about, including us. That's something, uh, probably one of the most requested additions from our community, and it's going to happen really soon. So we expect the smart contract and the staking dashboard to be ready sometimes in May next month. And I want to share something very cool that we're doing, something uh, pretty unique. Uh, the current view is that we, we want to work with uh, such technologies and, and, and names like Layer Zero or AnySwap. Um, also, they have an Any Call feature. What that means, we can have single token staking across multiple chains. And it doesn't really matter if you're staking on Ethereum or Binance Smart Chain or Polygon or any other chain that Raider is going to be on. You can deposit, withdraw, claim rewards on any chain you want. Even if you stake on Ethereum and you claim on Polygon, claim the rewards, that's going to be possible uh, according to the current view. So we are really excited about this, uh, working on that, and hopefully you know, we roll it out in May. And this is what the, the proposal was about, about reusing those airdrop tokens and spending those on these free initiatives. Really happy we got it done. And now it's time for some questions, I guess. Yeah, that was uh, the most important one. Well, if anybody has one. a question, uh, raise your hand. OK, made after death. All right, you guys hear me? Uh, Hello? I'll, I'll step back for a second. You... OK, yes. cool. I can Hello? hear you. Oh, OK, great. Um, so you said that we'll be able to unstake on any chain, even if we uh, deposit it onto Ethereum, we could unstake onto uh, Matic? We're looking into uh, claiming for now. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to unstake uh, on, on another chain and get the tokens well, I mean, there. I mean claiming the, claiming the rewards. Yeah, so you stake, you know, tokens on Ethereum, then you don't want to pay expensive gas fees on Ethereum for every claiming, you can claim on Polygon. This is something uh, we're working on, checking if that's really, really, really 100% feasible. Uh, so far, it looks like that. But, you know, we'll just wait for a confirmation. So my question really is that, um, is that considered a swap? Well, not really. Um, the bridge, the way the bridge works now, is that we, you know, we, if you want to bridge from Ethereum to BSC, we basically lock your tokens on ETH and mint them on, on BSC side. The supply is shared, so it's not a swap, it's rather kind of burning and minting. Okay, because I'm just, uh, nightmare uh, taxes this year. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, I see your point. No, that shouldn't be a swap, but it depends on, yeah, depends on how it's treated by your tax authority. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the question. Uh -huh. All right, Rain Man, do we have you there? Hello. Yes, I'm here. Hey, man, what's your question? Oh, hey. So I was wondering if there, um, if there's a portion of the app where the new tokens have some sort of an assurance. Not sure what you mean by that. Um, so for example, like I am a new D app user, uh, D app radar user, and I'm going through, you know, the token explorer, token swap, and like all the value estimators. Um, so I'm wondering, like, for partnership-wise, is there anything that kind of we can put in place as a security measure to say, like, the app radar has looked into these guys? Not necessarily an audit or a KYC, but just more of an assurance. Mm. Yeah, I think this is where we uh, probably Dragos and Nick might talk about this as well in, in the form of bounties or, or contribute to earn. I don't want to expand too much on this, but I can say that we're looking into that. Okay. Uh, and we will definitely need uh, community's input uh, when it comes to these kind of things, you know, uh, ensuring that the quality of the DAP is always high when it's listed, that there yeah. are no scams and so on. I think it's not possible to avoid those, but we no, can definitely work together on making that reality. So this kind of leads to my next question. <clears throat> now that I've used your platform for, you know, about two, three weeks now, who would I be able to talk to to get down that path? Just keep talking on Discord. 
Or if you want to reach out to someone specifically, you now hop on the pro chat, say, hey guys, I want to talk about this. We can definitely arrange a private chat. Okay, perfect. Um, I'll make sure to do that. Nice, man. Good question, good question. And I think we're going to cover that. Cool, thank you. As the guys said, we'll go into that in a bit more detail a bit later. It's part of... Uh... Okay, I don't see any other questions right here. So I guess let's move to the next one. I'm not sure if we still have Ian here. Down yeah, here. Okay, my bad. Go on. <laughs> okay, so we're into the second the second part for today. So some pretty cool questions there about the token. Just want to make sure no one else has got any questions in that area, and then we'll push forward. So second on the list today, we have product updates, including pro features and the forthcoming mobile app. So we've been tirelessly updating and improving our tracking capabilities over the last 24 months and for longer as well to bring users a suite of products. And the, the idea of the suite of products is that they complement each other and they tap straight into the pulse of the DAP, DAP ecosystem. So Nick is going to lead this conversation. He's head of product. And uh, yeah, the other two will contribute and we will all get involved. So Nick, if you want to kick off here, talk about uh, the initial pro features. Yeah, no, sure, Ian. Thank you for that. And uh, it's a relief to finally actually be on stage after the last uh, issue we had. So hopefully everybody can, everyone can actually hear me well. Uh, so basically, yeah, I mean, like I said, as, as Ian's already mentioned, we're making some massive changes to, to DAP Radar. Um, they're currently in the works right now. Um, with the changes that we've kind of seen over the, the, the last kind of year, we've realized we have to completely rebuild the product from the ground up. And that includes um, pages like the single DAP page, which we're completely redesigning, um, also the, the rankings as well. So over the next few months, you're going to be seeing some really, really big updates there. Um, and that's going to bring, basically bring a lot more data to the users, which is great because obviously it means you can obviously um, evaluate those dApps uh, much more clearly. We're going to provide a lot more meaningful insights. And what I mean by that really there is um, a lot of relationships uh, between the dApps, the tokens, uh, related dApps, etc. So there's going to be a lot more connections out there, which is going to be really, really cool. Um, so, and we're also kind of bringing it in the same modular format that you've seen in the portfolio. So this really does change the way and the feel of DAP Radar, um, but for the better, obviously. Um, and it also allows us to scale up in the future. Um, and specifically, when I mean scaling, I'm, I'm talking about contribute to earn um, and allowing the community to really uh, provide content. Um, and even product updates eventually to DAP Radar itself. Um, so this is going to be really, really exciting. This is just the start of some really, really big things that we're building. So um, yeah, no, that's that's really where we are right now. And it's it's kind of, uh, like I said, we're currently in the development stage. So uh, you're going to have to kind of be a little bit patient at the moment. There's a lot of work going on, um, but it's going to be some really, really big stuff coming. And the, the pages are, are being sort of redesigned and restructured to make it easier for the users, right? Because as we've grown, we've kind of grown on top. We've, we've added more and more on top of it, 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 each other. And it's become, you know, we've got a lot of information on DAP Radar. So, I mean, what kind of benefits does it bring for the users? Like, are things going to be easier for them to navigate? They're going to be able to find their way around, get to the useful information faster? Yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> I kind of joke sometimes I think that DAP Radar is a little bit like Windows 3.11 and then 95, 98, etc. <laughs> if everyone remembers that whole kind of, you know, that whole kind of thing. Um, yeah, we, we have grown massively in a really short space of time and there's just so much more information. So like I said, exactly like you've mentioned, we're providing a lot more user journeys, relevant content, which I think is really important. You know, if you're in a DAP, you want to know about those collections related to that DAP. You want to know about similar DAPs. You might want to know about the token. You might want to have charts, information that helps you make decisions on interacting with that DAP. Yeah. We're also uh, providing a lot more content for DAP categories as well. So one of the things, uh, a great example uh, will be games, basically. So obviously, um, there's a lot more content coming in within the, the, the games area with the games DAP sort of uh, scene. And, you know, Providing relevant content to games is completely different to what you'd provide for, let's just say, DeFi content. So we're making sure that when the user looks at those pages, they have the information they need. And we can expand on that, you know, over the, the coming months. Um, and like I said, with Contribute to Earn, which is coming uh, this year, um, you know, users will be able to actually add to that content too. So they'll be able to really provide um, some good insights there. 
Okay. I think it's it's quite important to state as well. Like uh, I've been with Duck Radar quite a while now, and I think uh, Skimantis and Drago should probably agree here. When 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 you guys started this, the uh, the task ahead of you wasn't so so large. There wasn't so much data. You know, there was Ethereum, a couple of blockchains, and everything was kind of contained. <laughs> and as we've gone along, just in the last two years, even it has just exploded entirely. So I think on our side as well, there's that realization that if we need, we want to grow, and we want to grow fast we need to get the community involved in order to kind of police this whole space because yeah, there's just too much happening here for any sort of individual teams or, you know, 20 odd people to stay on top of. So that's what this con in terms of contribute to earn Nick, just, and we'll wrap it up after this in terms of that. I mean, how can people expect that they would be getting involved? Like what sort of actions would they be doing? For example, just a couple. So right now we um, it, it's fairly limited right now. Um, that's that's you know for sure, and we're going to be expanding on it. But people right now can actually add into NFT collections. Uh, we're bringing out other uh, content as well. So there, there are several other areas that users can contribute towards. If you go to our um, our, our radar page, or, or if you, in fact if you go to our um, our Gitbook page, there's a there's a ton of content in there which kind of explains how you can contribute in there. Right now it isn't contribute to earn. It's contribute. But yeah. that isn't to say, you know, that, that we, we will be obviously changing that over the, the coming months. And retrospectively, we'll be looking at those users as well that, you know, have helped us kind of, you know, evolve DAP radar. Yeah. Um, and you're absolutely right with regards to the kind of the explosion in, in, in protocols on DAP radar. I mean, when I first joined 15 months ago, um, you know, there, there was probably a handful of protocols and, you know, it's, it's off the scale now. You kind of just see all the protocols and the content below the fold. So, you know, you can see that, you know, we've outgrown currently the, the data that we have. Yeah. We are effectively protocol agnostic. We want to feel that way. We want to kind of deliver all the, you know, all blockchains within DAP radar to make sure that users have a complete view of, of the landscape. And, and it, then, like I said, it's it kind of the, the way we see it right now. It just needs to be packaged in a much kind of better format. Um, so this is what we're kind of aiming to kind of improve upon. So, like I said, it'll be a huge change um, from a UI point of view. It looks fantastic. I'm already um, we're already working on some of the latest designs right now. So our design team is working incredibly hard to kind of deliver this. Uh, it's a huge UI UX kind of challenge, as you can imagine, because all that data needs to be delivered to the user. Plus, we also want to make it mobile optimized as well. You know, people don't always want to be stuck to their laptops. They walk around with their, their mobile devices. We want to make sure that when they load the, the, the pages themselves on the mobile devices, they can get the, the information they need at that moment in time. Nice, nice, nice. And that kind of leads us through. I mean, just to talk. So we kind of covered that. And I mean, that's that that's ongoing work. And and as you say, we've seen some of the, the early the early designs. They do look amazing. And I think people will be really, really nicely surprised when they start to see, see things unfold. If we can just move forward a bit into like the pro, so we got pro features and uh, and like pro alerts as well. So there's an update to the product to provide better interactions for pro users. First of all, Nick, let's just outline what a pro user is, if you'd be so kind, as to how people out there listening who are thinking, what's a pro user? How do you become a pro user of that radar? Yeah, good question. So basically, Pro is our, let's just say, the, the level up kind of feature of DAP Radar for our users. So for example, if you've staked on DAP Radar or you're a, a, a radar holder um, of a certain quantity, head over to the radar page, um, you, can, you, you would be eligible to be a Pro user. And what Pro gives is a number of features. So for right now, we have a whole bunch of kind of alerts uh, and updates through Discord, uh, which are exclusively uh, for Pro users. So standard users wouldn't be able to see any of that information. Um, we also have um, some specific filters and product features within uh, the page itself. Right now, it's fairly limited. Um, and I will say that, you know, we really want to expand on this. And like I said, we're, we're looking to really kind of ramp up what we're going to offer those users. Um, because effectively, it's, to, you know, you uh, well, as a user, by staking or holding radar, you're supporting us. So we obviously want to give back to you. And that's where Pro comes in. Um, so the next kind of set of features that we're going to be releasing are Pro Alerts. And Pro Alerts will allow users to create custom alerts um, initially on dApps and NFTs, and we'll expand that over different areas, uh, uh, in, uh, well, different areas in time. Um, but users can create alerts um, based on changes to the dApp or categories itself or the NFT protocols of their choice. So when I say dApp category, I mean the entire category right now. And over mm -hmm. time, we're going to start expanding it to individual dApps. So like I said, right now we start with a 
I wouldn't call it an MVP, but we start with a wider kind of, let's say, say parameters, and we'll start narrowing down as we see the users interacting with the product and we understand what it is they want to see from this. So it allows you, the user, to kind of be notified if there is a significant change within a, uh, an NFT protocol or NFT type or collection itself, or uh, even on a, a, a DAP category. So you can come to the site, react on it as quickly as possible. And those notifications will be delivered to you uh, through various channels, either through the notifications we have on DAP Radar, um, but also through Slack, Telegram, and, and also Discord as well. So there's a whole variety of choice right there for the user. Nice. Um, and we're going to continue to expand that as well. Um, so like I said, it's the first kind of enablement of Pro Alert, um, but we'll bring a lot more functionality over the coming months. Nice. And it's, yeah, just to kind of like simplify there, it's the same as what people may be used to when they're using a trading application or something similar. Yeah. Um, they get a quick ping. This token has gone up X amount. This token is down X amount, except we're doing that in the DAP space. So there's obviously a lot more data to take on board, hence why it takes longer. And uh, it's something that will roll out in stages. But uh, in terms of a usability feature, I think it's amazing. I think that's something that we, yeah, I can't wait to see that and to get some feedback from the from our users on how useful that is. Because it's all well and good having the data, but to be able to action the data is really what we want to provide for people, right? So Nick, just think exactly. about thing. I've got a question here for you that's just come in on message about the uh, contribute to earn. And I think we can deal with this one pretty quickly. So. I'm just going to throw this out to you. So anyone, sure. anyone will be able to participate in the contribute to earn program? Question mark. Or is there some sort of pre-approved user kind of benchmark for this? Is anyone able to get involved here, or do they have to hold a certain amount of radar? Or how is this going to work for the average man and woman? That's a really good question. So basically, contribute to earn is open to everybody. Obviously, you need to be part a DAP radar member. You probably have to, you know, you. We haven't worked out the absolute specifics yet, but anybody is is eligible to kind of jump in and be part of Contribute to Earn. So that's going to be one of the main things. Nice. Um, we will be bringing out more details on this over the coming months. Like I said, it's one of the areas that we're currently designing. Um, and we're, when I say designing, I'm talking about the actual the, the product functionality, how it's going to interact. Um, but we do want to hear from users as well. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, you know, we do rely on on the feedback as well. So. At the end, you know, the, the whole contribute to earn element is open to everybody. So if you are a developer out there and you want to kind of maybe integrate a new DAP or a new NFT collection or potentially down the line, even a new protocol integration, um, that will be open to you as a developer. Um, and you will obviously earn rewards as a result of that. So there's some really cool things coming. Um, it is open at several levels. We, we will have kind of multiple kind of products. Uh, integrated with contribute to earn i can't reveal everything right now unfortunately i'd love to um but you know like i said the idea is it's for the community to kind of give you know to to kind of contribute to dap radar and for us to give back to that community uh, in return awesome so yeah like i said big stuff coming yeah that's i think that's a really good thing that was a really great question by the way and i, I don't think we touched on that so again great question there mm. come in um okay cool so we've got pro alerts and I think, again, as we've said, that's going to be a really exciting part of what's going to happen. And, and we want people to shape that with us. And also, as a side note, if you're somebody out there who's you know, kind of desperate to get into this industry, but doesn't see an inroad, maybe you're still at university, maybe you're just quite young. This is a way to contribute to a platform which is the world's leader in DAP analytics. And if you do a good job there, it will be recognized. So and not just in the sense Absolutely. of yeah, it's not just about the rewards, it's about you know, you're doing a, a job for a purpose and I think it can it can really help us and we're not just going to kind of push that under the carpet. So, yeah, people who are uh, itching to get into this industry should be paying attention to that, I think. So, um, Nick, give me some examples of alerts, for example, like uh, basic, advanced. Like, what am I going to be getting? Is my phone going to be pinging like 24-7? What's going to be going on? <laughs> if that's what you want to have no i mean look um yeah i mean we that, i've got two examples that i put together here just you know for for the you know for the, for the audience and, and like i said we're, we're kind of working on more kind of product you know, functionality here but this, these are two very core kind of uh, alerts that we kind of have and, and a basic one for example would be if a new dap or nft collection is added in a specific category so straight away as soon as that's added into dap radar you would receive a notification you know, to whichever device or whichever channel that you'd like. Um, so that's a really straightforward example, especially, you know, if you're kind of interested in finding out about the latest collections, upcoming collections, etc. Um, 
So the other thing is an advanced example, and, and this is when you can really start kind of tweaking the notifications, the, or rather the alerts. Um, so for example, when an NFT on Ethereum blockchain, and let's just say the 24 hour trading volume is higher, higher than let's just say a million dollars, and the trading volume is increased by 50%, send an alert to the user. So you can, you can really combine multiple uh, filters or uh, let's just say um, variables uh, within the alerts. Um, specifically to what you want to have. And at, when those kind of, when everything kind of uh, is, is triggered and obviously everything kind of rings true, you would receive that notification to say, hey, this specific alert is, is triggered. Nice. Whatever it might mean to you, specifically, you know, maybe you want to have that, that information to make a, I don't know, a trade of sorts, or you want to interact with the app at that moment in time, you would then receive that alert. And it's, it's specifically for that user. So it isn't, you know, not everybody would get it. It's just that specific user. And that's what makes it really powerful. Um, and like I said, we'll continue to expand it. So we will look at kind of providing even more granular data. So you can really, you know, specify what notifications you want to see. Um, and you can choose different elements of data. So like I said, for now, it's going to be fairly broad, but we will start kind of adding that more granular, let's just say, or the more granular variables within those alerts. And that's when it's going to start getting really, really powerful. Um, and we hope to see the, the uptake on that. Nice. Yeah, the, the fact that you can personalize it to your own experience as well, there's the power, right? Like that's going to be what people really can leverage here. And exactly. Like having your own DAP radar. Every, every person will have their own version of DAP radar, as it were, which is, which is super cool. Um, at this point, I just want to go slightly back to design because we were talking about the new look of the site and how it's going to feature. And I realized that we skirted past Dragosh. Dragosh, can I get you involved here a little bit on the design side? Let's talk about it a bit. I know you're centrally involved here. And what's the objective for you on that? Can you hear me? Yep, we can now. OK, uh, so you were referring to the to the prowlers. Yeah. Uh, so basically, like, yeah, what, what Nick uh, explained uh, about, I mean, the, the main goal of having prowlers uh, is, yeah, I mean, to keep users uh, and I mean, to give everybody a way to, to stay up to date, because I mean, we know how hard it is to 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 keep track of everything that's happening. Uh, I mean, people are like in 100 Discord servers following like uh, 200 like or maybe thousands of Twitter accounts to get their information and so on. So we're trying to to help with that, uh, and that's the main the main goal of having pro alerts. Um, and I mean, from a from a user experience perspective, yeah, uh, the, we're yeah. trying to do yeah, we're trying to do that as uh, let's say smooth as possible. Uh, then like to to make the this like setting up the alerts in a way that. Uh, is easily understandable, and it's uh, uh, like yeah, we offer all the the details that we have because we have tons of data. As as Nick was explaining, we 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 are tracking tokens, we're tracking DApps, NFT collections, DeFi protocols, um, like overall blockchain activity. Uh, so the goal is to to try to put that in a way uh, that it's uh, it's easy to understand. Uh, it it's easy to. Uh, to, to navigate through through all that data and through the complex environment that uh, that was created, like in the blockchain industry, because it's it's very complex, and we have uh, like we are putting a lot of emphasis on on UX and UI design. I think uh, I always uh, like to congratulate our team because I, I I can say like UX is a big problem in the in the blockchain space. So um, oh, yeah. yeah, we are trying to trying to put a lot of work. Uh, on that and a lot of focus uh, and hopefully uh, yeah our users will find that uh, useful and they will appreciate the effort and they can achieve their their goals one of the one of the other interesting things i saw during my time with that radar is the use of hotjar as a tool to look at the analytics on site and actually track what people are doing and i've always thought that was really really smart and a really cool thing to see because design sometimes you can make an assumption right you can think oh this button is obvious or it's for us a lot of things are obvious but for the the common user it, it's not so obvious right so again in that guide like we've been using the community to guide this the whole time right this is when this is not new that the community has been guiding our action definitely uh but uh we 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 were just so far like yeah, trying to trying to learn from users' actions, trying to see where they're struggling, uh, what we can improve, uh, and again offer them the best experience. Like that's 
an ongoing focus of, at that trader. Um, and now, like we're we're trying to also create a direct connection with with the with our community, not just by by following their kind of um, their, their struggles and their challenges on the platform, but to actually discuss with them, get their feedback directly through through these calls, yeah. through di- through, uh, through Telegram, uh, through Discord. So uh, we want to kind of get past the uh, this the stage where we are just trying to understand based on their actions, but actually communicate and to again establish this direct communication because uh we can ask questions they can give us direct feedback and that's very helpful yeah definitely and 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 it's valuable and it's massively valuable because uh, like the user dictates what we do at all steps so i think it's really important right i'm going to jump back over to nick um nick we were at the point where we got onto the nft explorer so as you've been under a rock for the last year, you should know that NFTs have absolutely exploded onto the scene, more than a year, in fact, um, generating massive trading volume, massive interest from huge companies that you never saw involved in blockchain ever before. So as a company, we pivoted fast. We now have full tracking capabilities across the majority of uh, NFT collections on multiple blockchains. Again, not an easy task, as I think Mantis would uh, definitely stress. But Nick, NFT Explorer. It's come a long way since it first started, right? Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, this project has been a long time coming. Um, it, and, and as you said, it is supremely complex because there are just so many areas. So basically what we're building is um, effectively uh, an area where it's focused entirely on NFTs. And, you know, we launched our NFT sales page, which has been really successful. Um, and it's really useful for users to kind of see the latest sales, um, the latest collections and what's going on there. But the NFT Explorer takes it 100 steps further. Um, It really does give huge insights into um, basically uh, current collections, up up and coming collections, um, basically all the sales data. um, There's all sorts within there. Um, And we're really, really excited to bring this one out. And it's currently in development at this moment. So we'll be bringing it out in the next month or two. so basically, like I said, it, it, when using this product, it gives a very visual um, view of those collections, but also you can kind of create a more, let's just say, investor view. Um, so you're not focused entirely on the NFT images as well, but, but the actual data itself. Um, we have buyer seller tra- uh, data. We have the, the, obviously the volume, the traders, the sales, floor prices, uh, market, market prices, the lot. It's all within there. Um, and like I said, it, it's... The, the the product has been put together in such a way that it really does focus entirely on NFTs themselves. So we're really kind of uh, excited to kind of bring that one to you guys. Um, and also one of the things we'll be bringing there uh, will be obviously a lot of filtering. Um, so uh, we have, uh, as a pro user, you can, uh, you can filter multiple items. As a standard user, you only get one filter. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> but if you become a pro user, you can actually also narrow down and apply multiple filters to a lot of the data that's on there. Um, and we also have also the metadata uh, within those NFT collections as well. So you can filter by attributes, you can filter by all sorts. So everything is within there. Um, and like I said, the product is also not only desktop optimized, but also mobile optimized as well. So um, yeah, really, really excited to bring this one out to you guys. Um, and uh, I'd say that probably, you know, like I said, uh, at the end of uh, the well, the next couple of months, I'd say we'll be ready to come out. Careful, careful. Yeah, no, I, I was being a little careful there because always, you know, there's always that thing you say, "Oh, bring it out there," but it's no. It's <laughs> we hope to come in the next couple of months. We are making really good progress on it. I've already seen some of the items on our on our staging environment, and it's it's looking phenomenal. So yeah, really excited on that one. I think the bottom line is, like I say, careful now. It's a hell of a lot of work what we're trying to undertake here, and I think for people who expect it to happen in a week, in a minute, it's, it's just not. It's just not feasible. So, we are. I mean, I don't know what people think we're doing over here at that radar, but trust me, we are working around the clock, um, and we have to because we want to stay competitive and we want to be the best. So that's how we roll. And I think um, Skimantis, I wanted to ask you to jump in here um, and talk about kind of the importance of NFTs as an asset class. Um, they've they've kind of arrived out of nowhere and, and and taken the world by storm. So, how do you feel about NFTs as an asset class? Is it a fad? Like, do or do you think it's it's here to stay? Oh, Skimantis is having troubles, I believe, with uh, Discord. It feels like they're picking on our CEO today. Last week they were picking on all of us, and now they're picking on him. Oh, do we have him? 
All right, cool. Let's skirt past. I'm sorry, Scamantis. If you suddenly appear to talk, then we will all be quiet. Oh, my man. Okay. <laughs> Discord is a lot of fun, right? Maybe we should all change jobs and go and fix Discord first, and then we can get back to that. I was thinking that. They can do with the product. <laughs> anyway, joke. moving on. Oops, I shouldn't say that. Okay. And Nick, if you're there, let's carry on with the next pro features. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry about that. Yeah. No, no, absolutely. So, yeah, carrying on from what uh, we were just saying right now. Um, and, and I think you mentioned, you touched up on one point there that, you know, it's, it, you know, the amount of work that goes on in the background is absolutely immense. And building a product like DAF Radar is supremely complex. So you can imagine the amount of data um, that we need to kind of pull together to kind of make these products happen, um, which is why it's frustrating as a, you know, as, as, as the product, you know, the head of product here that, you know, I want to show this to the users. Um, and we, we've been spending a lot of time, like I said, kind of working on the back end side of things, getting everything ready. So now things are coming to fruition and we're going to kind of see some really great products. Talking of which great products, obviously mm -hmm. next pro features. So, um, like I said, you know, we're building this really great NFT Explorer product, which we're, like I said, we're very excited about. Um, and I've already mentioned that we're going to have some pro features on there, but they're the existing pro features that we have now. And the plan is to really expand upon this. Um, and we'll, we will be adding um, specific pro features to the NFT Explorer. Um, now, I, I can't give too much information at this moment in time because a lot of that stuff is still, um, let's just say, in requirement stages. We're kind of thinking about, obviously, the, the architecture of it all. So I can't really give too much away. But one thing I can say, it, it's regarding, I think the, the best way to describe it would be signals. So when you're making choices on your NFT collections, we will be able to provide you signals to say, this is a good idea, this is a bad idea, this is what users are doing, this is what users are not doing. So we'll be able to provide you that data um, to indicate what is going on within specific collections. And that, that boils down to the sales, that boils down to the, the interactions that are going on there. Um, <clears throat> and it's really interesting because like I said, we, we've been thinking really long and hard about what is gonna be valuable to our users, what's gonna help them make that big choice, that, that big break on on dap radar um so like i said these pro features they're designed to help you do exactly that so whilst i'm being a bit coy here and i apologize for that um there are some really really exciting kind of uh new features coming into the nft explorer and they'll be coming later this year so um please do keep an eye on out for that one and obviously we'll be very excited to announce that one in the next meeting or when we can obviously when we can when we can let's be let's be yeah, when we can exactly I, I know it sounds very cool it's awful isn't it i i really want to tell you but i i simply you know we need we need to work very hard on defining exactly how it's all going to work once we've got that ready we can talk about it so yeah Nick, i think it's, it's right super now. cool that you, you you know you're so eager to tell everybody about this so it, it's a clear sign that we're working hard and that it's in development and that what we're making is very cool and that we hope the uh, community are really going to like it so don't worry man Absolutely. don't worry we've all got deadlines and uh yeah there's a i do these every week and people throw hard dates out and they they message me afterwards and they regret <laughs> that so uh yeah, there's nothing wrong with a hard date, but it's it's a lot of work. So we just have to be a bit coy about these things. But um, let's move on to the next thing. And um, Nick, I'm really putting you on the spot today. But the next thing we're going to talk oh, yes, about yes. is super cool, right? This is something that has been in the pipe for a while now, but it's something that should be coming fairly soon. I believe it is a mobile application. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, this has been asked for by our community for a long time. We've been talking about it for a long time. Um, we have been working on this really, really hard, actually. Um, and um, when anyone says build a mobile app, it's not easy building a, mo a mobile app. And I'm going to just throw it right out there. Um, we're coming very, very close to, to kind of getting to the end of this one. Um, so, um, we are planning to release a mobile app. Um, in the next, let's just say, a uh, couple of months. Um, and that's going to be initially available on iOS. Sorry, guys. Uh, it's just obviously from the developer point of view, it makes life a little simpler, but we will be rolling out very soon afterwards on Android. So the mobile app itself um, is completely native, so it'll run incredibly fast. We're not kind of relying on any, uh, you know, we're not kind of iframing it or anything as well like that, you know. Um, it is completely native, um, and we'll be including the uh, the DAP radar portfolio in there initially. Our uh, NFT uh, single NFT explorer or viewer product, so you can obviously view your NFTs. Um, we'll also be providing sharing options, so you can share with the community from the app. 
Um, and also we'll be adding the, the rankings in there. Um, so like I said, we're starting with an MVP because we want to get the product out to our users. We want to get feedback. We want to kind of start using it to, obviously it's part of the whole notifications we're doing for pro users to be able to communicate directly on the user's apps, uh, de uh, the, sorry, the mobile uh, devices. And that's really powerful for the user. It means you get an alert straight away. You don't have to log in somewhere. You don't have to go into a different application. You have DAP right up and we can give you that alert straight away. Um, and it means you can make an immediate, uh, immediate kind of uh, re you know, choice on you know, whatever you might get. In action. You can react to it straight away. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. You can, you can react um, to that. Just to backtrack, Nick, sorry, um, just to go back slightly on yeah, the yeah. mobile app, I just want to touch on the portfolio because some people I don't think know what the DAP radar portfolio is, actually. And I'd just like to get that out there, like early doors, because the mobile app will focus on that. So do you want to just give people a brief explanation of what portfolio is, what it does, and why it's so damn good? Yeah, no, absolutely. So we've been building a portfolio now for, well, I, when I joined Dapper Radar 15 months ago, um, there was uh, an early version of it. Um, and basically the portfolio allows you to view all your digital assets from your wallets. We support uh, Ethereum, Binance, and Polygon. And very soon we're gonna be supporting Polygon NFTs. So they are coming very, very, very soon. I can say that. Nice. Um, but we support all three chains. Um, you put your wallet address in there and you can see a complete overview of your assets, whether that be tokens, your investments, um, the, your NFT collections. You, we even have our, uh, our NFT financials view, which kind of gives you a profit loss on your NFTs, yeah. which is a really powerful product, actually. Um, there, there are actually paid products out in the market, um, which you have to, you know, like I said, you have to pay to view that data. We give it away for free. Um, and it's available to everybody using DAP Radar. Um, we also have our wallet manager as well, which if you create an account in DAP Radar, you can store all your favorite wallets on the, the wallet manager. And that's viewable across any device. So if you switch from your desktop to your mobile, to your mobile app, everything is there. So it means you can kind of store all your, uh, your favorite wallets and everything is available to you. Very cool. Um, Very cool. I use it all the time. It's, it's really, really cool to use. Um, and like I said, we work very hard to make sure that the data is as accurate as possible. You know, we don't want to show just any data. We, we make sure that everything we show in terms of your, your net worth is completely accurate. It takes into account loans. It takes into account any debt you might have. So it is a very good way of viewing, obviously, the, your entire uh, wallet portfolio. And you can put any wallet in there, by the way. Yeah, it doesn't just gonna, have to be your own. I was going to mention that. Like, it's not just about your wallet. It's about, well, you know, I can track Nick's wallet if I want, but that's probably not that, yeah. that interesting, right? So if you want to track, like, Pranksy, or you want to track Hot Wallets, or you want to track anybody's wallet, and then, you know, you're basically getting a bit of investment advice by tracking people's wallets look at a person's wallet that's making particular moves in the nft space or the token space and you can see what they're into that's the beauty of the blockchain exactly. and the transparency right exactly and also i want to add in there as well you can use ens domains as well so if you throw an ens domain on the, the wallet on the actual the wallet input you can view that too so even if you haven't got the wallet address but you have the ens domain just throw that in there and it'll show the the, the contents of that user or whoever that user's wallet is so for example pranksy.ens Throw it in there and you'll see Pranksy's wallet straight away. Yep. And it's supremely fast. I mean, we're working to optimize it as well. Um, and we're continuing to optimize it too. So um, we, we aim to have one of the fastest portfolios out there in the market. So we, we are working incredibly hard on that one. Cool. So the mobile app is coming. Just to just to overview that again, it's going to in the first phase will include the portfolio manager, the single NFT explorer. We will have sharing facilities. You'll be able to see the rankings and it's coming to iOS first and then Android second, right? So we're all Absolutely. super excited about this. I think it's going to be very cool. And it gives people another way to interact with that radar as well. So exactly. And one more thing, oh, sorry, just one thing I want to say as well, we will be releasing regular updates. So like I said, the first release is just the first part. And the, the goal is to have what we have on DAP radar on the mobile app. So like I said, it'll be iterative. So you have to kind of a little bit patient. We don't want to do the whole thing in one big whack yeah. because otherwise it'll never get released. So Definitely uh as we do more releases there'll be more and more features on there just to kind of hype that up a little bit further at the end of the chat we've got some pretty sexy looking screenshots that have been shared by the design department that uh, uh, with the mobile app there so you'll get to see the first kind of screenshots of what it's going to look like and how it's going to function so yeah, i use the word sexy very uh, infrequently and i've used it today so uh, i think yeah it's a cool product it's going to look very cool so I think we've covered all that, Nick. Thank you so much. I know you're not feeling great right now. I think you've been on fire this session. You've done a great job of articulating everything that's happening for DAP Radar. 
At this point, I would ask if there's any questions on any of that, but I think Nick has done such a great job outlining it all. Perhaps there isn't. I think it's more a case of patient, it's wait, we're working, and it's coming. I think that's the overall message there. So that, lead, that leads us nicely into the last section for today. And uh, we've got 10 minutes left, and we can extend a little bit as well. But what we want to talk about is the introduction to DAP radar bounties. And Dragosh, I'd like you to, to jump in here. Um, so it's not easy to go from what we were, which was kind of a read-only product, a fully interactive one. It takes time. You think we built a solid foundation. And um, I've got a saying, you know, you don't, if you want to build a ship, you don't drum up people together to collect wood, and you don't assign them tasks and work. Rather, you teach them to long for the endless immensity of the sea. I'm going to replace the word sea with Web3. Most DAO setups have bounties, and this is the way we'd like to work. We're going to be using D-Work for managing the bounties. But Dragosh, jump in, man. Like, what's going on here? What should people be getting excited about? Let's talk about uh, the bounties a little bit. For sure. Uh, I think, yeah, what, uh, what Nick did, uh, what, what Nick explained before, and also what Screamant has uh, added about uh, contributor and so on, I think that kind of leads to bounties um, in a way. And I would look at bounties as a very early stage, um, like, or like an, an MVP of what's, uh, what's to come for contribute to earn. Uh, I mean, bounties in the DAO space are something uh, very common. So if anybody here um, is, is part of any DAO or participated already in, in any open source uh, environments, like bounties are, uh, are a common way to encourage uh, contributors um, uh, to engage with the with the projects, uh, and this is exactly what we want to do uh, for now. Because as Nick said, we have a lot of things in progress. We are working, we are building, we are we are planning the future, um, and obviously we want to embed all those contributions and contribute as a program into the product directly. Um, so you don't necessarily need to use external tools, uh, or you don't need to. Um, it, it's not going to be uh, very like the, the entry barrier to contribute to earn, we're going to try to uh, to in, allow everybody to contribute in a in a certain way, e either by just reporting us uh, uh, a tab that is dead or like that is not working anymore, um, or someone that could code something uh, for that trader. Like we we want to enable everybody to to be able to to contribute. But right now with bounties, we are looking at uh, at them as a uh, as a very simple way to to start engaging and also as as i was saying earlier we are trying to to create this direct communication with our users um and bounties are also like another way to to allow them to engage uh, to be much more open much more transparent because these are all our goals and we want to to build the dao in the the real uh, in the real way like a dao is decentralized is transparent is open so that's exactly what we're aiming to do and bounties is one of the first steps we are doing towards that um, as you have already mentioned we are planning to use um, we are planning to use a platform called dwork for the start um, and uh, we are actually discussing with them to, to set up uh, an ama on, on in our discord uh, server so we'll probably even uh, have like a demo uh, we're still thinking about about that but uh, yeah, Dwork is a tool, and I'm gonna share the link in the general uh, channel as soon as I'm done. Maybe you want to explore that. Uh, Dwork is a platform that allows um, DAOs, and not only DAOs, but any open source projects to to create a, a Trello board. You, you might be aware with Trello, um, and that's completely uh, decentralized. You can uh, assign a bounty on top of the task. As soon as someone uh, completes the task, they can get the reward directly on chain. So everything is transparent, everything is, is open. Um, and uh, yeah, we're aiming to, to use that platform to, to do that. Um, I can give a few examples of uh, bounties that could exist. We haven't yet published any, any final list, uh, but uh, from creating documentation for Dapreader products, for integrating from, to integrating um, NFT marketplaces and NFT collections into our tracking system or DeFi protocols. Uh, again, if you're familiar with other open source projects, you know you can uh, you can code integrations, and we want to reward uh, anybody that wants to contribute to to DAP Raider platform, creating video content, uh, listing DApps that we miss, 
uh, I'm not sure, creating sticker packs for Telegram or for, uh, for Discord. So, uh, yeah, we, still at this point, we want to enable... Sorry, Ian? Different levels for different people to get involved, I think, is very cool. Like, you've got, uh, you've got options here. You don't need to... I think the, the message for, for people, really, is that you don't have to have uh, reams and reams of tech experience in coding on Solidity to do this. It's pretty open. Like, there are levels of involvement. There's the low-level stuff and then the really high-level stuff. So it is really, truly open to everybody, right? Exactly. I mean, that's, that's our goal. Uh, we want to allow anybody that has coding experience, but also that is interested in dApps or that, uh, that has a passion for a specific dApp. Maybe yeah. you're, if you're passionate about, I'm not sure, randomly saying a game like DeFi Kingdoms or Axe Infinity, yeah. um, if, if you're passionate about that game and you, you know like the ins and outs of that game, writing a review and uh, having that published on DAP Reader for anybody else that, that reads our content and that visits those pages, uh, we want to reward you. We want to incentivize you to, to come with, with more content because also one of the goals uh, with, with our product is to educate users. So again, if we can help us educate more users uh, about the, the space, about using dApps, uh, we want to incentivize you to do that. So uh, yeah, it doesn't matter if you're a writer, designer, developer, um, or just helping us to, to find the, uh, the bad or the good dApps on, on the platform. We want to reward everybody because that's, again, like that's the start of Contribute to Earn. And at the moment, it will be fairly manual. Uh, but going forward, uh, with all the things that Nick, that Nick mentioned, uh, we want to enable that in a much more automated way and transparent and decentralized going forward. So, uh, yeah, I think that's, that's all about bounties. And again, I just want to repeat, like, we're going to uh, try to bring the DWORK team into our server. Yeah. Uh, they will definitely explain how the work works, uh, so then everybody is aware. Uh, we're going to try to share some educational content about that. We want that everybody is aware on how they can contribute and how they can help um, and be rewarded for for being a, a contributor to the operator. Basically, like being part of the wider team, isn't it? Right. It's um, it's a very cool thing to be considered as part of a team when you you know you potentially got another job or you're doing something else, but you're actually contributing to the picture of something you really love people are always asking you know and they talk about radar and they're saying you know when when moon and if exactly. he here needs to participate and get involved and there's many people that have used that radar for years essentially as a read only and kind of looking but they've not been able to um get involved as much yeah exactly exactly and and again as i, as I have mentioned education transparency um being much more open, these are like all, all the goals that we have. Uh, and we, are, we have tons of uh, initiatives that we are either, we are, we are kickstarting as bounties or we are still working on the, on the details. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we want to allow everybody to, to understand what we're working on, uh, how they can help. Uh, and then, then again, as you said, like instead of just uh, being passive and asking, yeah. actually contributing and, and putting a, uh, like some effort into helping uh, the the journey to the moon yeah, that's it right like it's a journey that we're on together we can't do it on our own and it, it takes a lot to to kind of come out with that and i think for me personally like coming from i don't know like in traditional companies this idea of collaboration community building it wasn't emphasized as much but it's a word you hear like all the time daily a community community but it, it, there's a reason for that and it's because it's absolutely vital to what we're trying to achieve here and that's the, the kind of the outlook of web3 it's not about a group of people forming all the actions it's about all of us doing this together so i think it's very cool and we have come to we're going to wrap it up now on this call at uh, number one i want to apologize again because it looks like discord has kind of played a few games with us CEO has been kicked out a few times um, and I think to be honest with you for the next one of these we'll probably head over to Twitter um, where we'll do a Twitter spaces thing um, but keep it keep it locked on to that radar to find out more about that but mainly I just really like to thank everybody for showing up today we've got over 100 people 160 people listening 260 people are the lifeblood of what we're trying to do here at that radar we really do value your opinions and what you have to say um, and we ask you to reach out to us at all times to ask questions and to give contributions as well. 
hopefully what you've heard here today gives you some confidence about what we're up to over here at DAP Radar and where we're headed as a company. And more importantly, that you guys are going to get to sculpt that with us. So I just want to thank Nick and Dragosh. Maybe you want to give a quick shout to the people listening. Yeah, no, thanks, guys. It's been really great, actually. And, and I'm really excited to kind of give you more uh, more information uh, in the regular kind of updates that we're going to do. So, um, yeah, keep uh, keep your eyes peeled. Nice, nice, nice. I think we um, have to... Yeah. Sorry, and just to add from my side, I think, again, like this was, uh, like this is our first community call. Um, I think, again, we're happy to listen to your feedback. If you think we have missed something or you'd like, we'd, you'd like us to share more things in the next call, um, Please share that. We are, we are happy to, to tweak this in a way that it makes everybody happy. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks everybody for, for being here. Uh, and yeah, let's chat in, in Discord or Telegram if you're around. Yeah, cool. Thank you very much to our speakers for today. It's not easy to be up here on the stage and field these questions. So thank you very much, guys. And as Dragosh says, we, this is just one of many. So we'll be back soon and we'll do this all again. But in the meantime, we'd love your feedback on the format, how we do things. And, uh, and what we talk about here as well. So as I said a minute ago, the community is a powerful thing and we really do love you guys and we need you to contribute. So that's why we're here. And uh, if you've got any questions that you're a bit scared to ask or you didn't see the moment, jump on the next call with us or jump into Discord and ask those questions because uh, we're all there ready to answer the questions. You know, these are not bots answering your questions. These are us. So uh, yeah, jump in. So um, that's it for today. I think that was a far bigger success than the other day. Again, I'll thank you all for tuning in. And what I'll ask you to do is stay tuned in. Stay tuned into that radar. Keep your eye on what we're doing. The best place to look over is Twitter and Discord. That's where we put our most up-to-date information and what's going on. Keep it locked on the blog to find out about all the latest product updates and how we're progressing forward. For me, Ian, that's a really big thank you to everybody. Thank you to my uh, colleagues here. It's been great to, to share the stage with you. Oh, 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 Cornelia, I'm very sorry. I almost forgot. So as I said at the beginning, we've got 200 popes and we're going to give those out at the right now, actually. So all you need to do is DM Cornelia for a pope in the general chat. All right. She will sort you out. And as I said at the beginning, arguably, this is one of the most important popes because it shows that you're contributing to the future of the world's DAP store. So again, for me, Ian, thank you very much. And we'll see you all very soon.